while. We're gonna do a five minute video. I just did a one minute on this. And so what always happens is people will contact me and they will say, hey, I'm in a fight with so-and-so. And my first question every single time is, can you please send me uh, the contract? And I pray that they say, oh yes, absolutely. Uh, let me send it over to you. And, and by the way, most of the time we're talking about business owners. One of the very, very important parts about owning a business is creating systems and policies and procedures and training your team and making sure that they're following the same recipe every time they get in the kitchen, um, right? If you go to McDonald's a hundred times, it's gonna taste the same a hundred times. And that's because the people there are trained to follow a formula. And so part of a formula, especially in a service-based business, is to have a good contract. Typically what we do is we help our clients create a template contract that then they can re-over in scenarios where they're gonna be reusing it over and over. So what are a couple scenarios like that? One might be if they have employees, right? You could have a standard employment contract or what we'll do is we'll break it down by job description. We'll have a, an exempt employee salary contract and that'll be a template. And then we'll have a non-exempt employee hourly contract and that'll be a template. And then maybe we'll have independent contractors that we work with on a regular basis. Now, if they're a real independent contractor, and you guys have probably seen my videos on that, misclassifying employees and contractors. And when I say real, I mean they're really a contractor, then they should have their own LLC or corporation. They should have their own contract that they give to their uh, customers or clients, right? If it's just you're trying to pretend like one of your employees is really uh, a, a contractor, but that person works for you full time and only works for you and doesn't work for anyone else. Well, what I'm saying is you should probably have a contract to make them sign and you could draft it yourself. My other video will tell you that you could get in trouble and spend a lot of money on taxes and penalties from either the Department of Labor or the IRS. Okay, so um, when you have these contracts that you're gonna use a lot, your, your customer agreements, your employment agreement, your contractor agreement, um, and then there's other contracts that are not going to be that frequent, right? Like if you're negotiating a joint venture or um, an IP licensing deal, unless you're in the business of doing IP licensing deals, then maybe you'll have a standard IP licensing agreement template that you can reuse over and over. So in this scenario, here's the story. Guy calls me, former client, and former client says, hey, I'm in a fight with this guy. And I'm like, okay, who is he? And he goes, well, he's kind of an employee, but not really. We paid him 1099. He's really more of a consultant or uh, a, uh, a consultant or an independent contractor. And I said, okay, great, uh, send me the contract. He goes, well, you know, that's the thing. And I go, what's the thing? And he says, well, we negotiated a contract and we went back and forth, but then we never signed it. That, that, like, I don't know if you could hear me hitting my palm on my head uh, when over the phone, but that's exactly what I did. And I'm like, oh, so you went through the energy of, of drafting and negotiating a contract. Maybe you spent money on a lawyer. Maybe you tried to do it yourself and you downloaded things off the internet. But either way, you got all the way up to like the one yard line. And then I don't know what happened. You started working with the guy without having an agreement in place. Guys, the purpose of the agreement is for when things go wrong. Now, you've probably heard me say this before. If you don't care if things go wrong and it's not going to make you upset, then great. Save your money. You don't need a contract. You don't need a lawyer. But if when things go wrong, things could go bad, like in this situation, this person was hired as a business development consultant and he was gonna be given a percentage of revenues ostensibly forever on the customers that he brings in. So now it's about a year into the relationship, they're having a falling out, the, the guy's not pulling his weight anymore, they kinda wanna renegotiate the deal, the guy starts threatening, make me a partner, otherwise I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna take my clients that I've already brought to you and I'm gonna take them to a competitor. And my client says to me, well, can you do that? And I go, well, you don't have a signed agreement. So here's the thing. There could be an argument that since we went back and forth on this draft, maybe there's an email somewhere where the person says, okay, I agree, let's proceed. But then you never did the actual step of signing the agreement. There could be an argument to the judge. Well, judge, this is the terms of what they agreed to. So the attorney's fee clause, the non-compete, the non-solicitation, that they negotiated and agreed to and then started performing to perform under the contract and he did his part of the job, I did my part of the job. So obviously we had a meeting of the minds. Problem is guys, that's like a 50% at best argument because you're gonna have he said, she said and he's gonna say, no, I never agreed to that. And so how much better would it be if you just had a signed agreement? And so guys, if you're gonna go through the, the hassle of even drafting an agreement, 
don't break your own rules. Start doing business the right way and make sure you get a signed copy. So if you guys have any questions about what kind of agreements or maybe you have a story to tell me that I can share in one of my future videos, please leave a comment below.